has the era of Connor Timmons finally arrived? After this game? Maybe. There's a chance. Abs win over the San Jose Sharks 4-3. to three. Oh my goodness gracious! Was it in time? Score! Justice is served! We're going to skip over the first period because I've explained what an avalanche first period looks like far too many times this season already. There was no score in it. That's all you really need to know. The second period is a 21-4 shot differential in the Avs' favor. The Avs are always good in the second, but that is absurdly good. And yet somehow, the Avs find a way to give up the first goal of the game. Hayes is able to get some clean possession down in the corner on the penalty kill here, and he goes for a rim that goes to no one, and it's an easy keep for the Sharks. Not a great look on the penalty kill. The Sharks are able to hold it in deep. They work it in even deeper as both Taves and Nemeth get caught a bit out of position, no one protecting the front of the net. And then Hurdle kind of bottles this one. He was trying to drag a move across, but ends up making a perfect pass to Barbanov instead, as Taze has committed to him, which Taze played that as right as you can once he was already out of position. From there, honestly, this still probably should have been a save, but Dubnik is a little bit slow to react, and you get this awkward situation where Taves is almost in his way as Dubnik tries to get across but gets beat. Unimpressive ability, really, to be honest. The Avs find ways to not completely control the game and have it be over by the end of the second period. But even still, after last game where we saw the Avs handily take down the Sharks, they at least managed to win this game by 5-on-5 five five play. They completely wiped out the Sharks, and once the Yams got the lead, the game never really felt dangerous again. Starts with one goal from the top line, and let's talk about why Connor Timmins is looking so good. A four-on-four situation where the Avs win the puck back cleanly. Taves takes it, finds Rantanen quickly. Quick, quick passing here. Connor Timmins, the man on this side in the four-on-four who has moved up as Rantanen has moved back out to the point, finds probably the best pass of the year. I'm just going to say it. He knows McKinnon is on the back door, barely even in your frame here, and just one touches it across to him. McKinnon has got an easy goal as he just has to touch it in. But wait, it gets better. Not only is it a one-touch pass, it's got sauce all over it and nutmegs a dude as well, because why not? Let's look that one more time, one more time. Let's just see. We'll frame by frame it here. As the puck comes through, it's off the air there, off the ice there, lifted through the legs, past the stick, and to McKinnon for the tap in. That is beautiful. Look, did Connor Timmons directly try to nutmeg a guy with sick sauce? I mean, probably not exactly like that, but he knew where McKinnon was and knew it was a good pass to make. The fact that he managed to pull it off in such ridiculous fashion. Well, that's just a bonus, and yes, that is going to be my assist of the year. Don't you worry about that. As often happens with the Avs in the second period, once they get one, they get another one. Just a couple of minutes later, the game just gets easier once they feel themselves. Another offensive zone faceoff this time. It's Comfort winning it across to Burakovsky, who gets it, doesn't think about it too much, just gets to the top of the circle, walks into a shooting lane, fires, and into the net it goes. The 2-1 lead after the second period, good, not great for the Avs, and obviously the underlyings are spectacular. The third period, the Avs remained in command for the most part, and they got their third goal of the game from, well, not someone you would expect to be a sniper at the very least. McKinnon is going to zip around the zone on this play, and here's a positive that a lot of people don't talk about. With the ability to move like this and his constant looking to get engaged in the play, pucks like this that end up bouncing into space are a lot easier for him to recover than many people. This keeps the abs in possession, Makar takes it, walks down in, Nemeth coming out from the neutral zone, gets the blue line, Makar sets him up, a laser comes through, and Patrick Nemeth scores a goal. 3-1. This game should be over for the most part, but 50 seconds after they make it 3-1, well, a couple of things happen. First of all, the Avs go on the power play, and then 
Despite being on the power play, they find a way to give up a goal to the Sharks. A bit unfortunate, but I think you live with this mistake. You have to be aggressive on the power play. Sometimes pucks are going to bounce, and this one just bounced at the exact wrong time for Makar. Ends up giving up a breakaway back the other way. Dubnik comes up big on the initial play, makes the save, but is completely out of position and gives up a huge rebound. Pretty weak back check from the Avs on this one, that they're not even close to hounding down this puck. Makar kind of lost his footing a bit and took himself out of the play as well. Just kind of bad all the way around on that part of it. Yes, the bounce happened, and then the Avs managed to make it work worse on themselves as that puck gets tapped in easily by Couture. Now, this goal was challenged for goalie interference. You could see some contact there, but I agree with the fact that the goal ended up standing. I don't think that's really goaltender interference. At least he didn't prevent Dubnik from making a save or handling the puck. The rebound was coming out either way, and the finish was going to happen. That makes it 3-2, to two, and you'll notice a trend here as the Avs do manage to get the ceiling fourth goal with about four and a half minutes left in the game. The Avs beat the Sharks with set plays. Yep, it's an offensive zone faceoff, and yep, the Avs win it. This one gets brought across here to Connor Timmins. Taves to Timmins. Timmins holds on to this puck for a little bit, and great recognition from him. Eyes on the puck. Eyes on the puck. Eyes on the puck. Head turning to the puck. Eyes towards the puck. Oh, the entire San Jose Sharks are puck watching. Okay, I'll give it right back to my D partner, Taves. And look, caught drifting. All of a sudden, there's a shooting lane. This puck gets towards the net, and it's officially credited to go to Rantanen. Looks like it went off of his skate there. Not 100% sure exactly. We can back it up a little bit, but sure look to me. This skate's going to appear right here behind Coronar, and it looks like it deflects off. Oh, you know, you know what? It got stick. I think it got stick. Either way, it's credited to Rantanen. That is the game-winning goal. That one ends up being your game winner. The Avs are feeling good. They do give up another goal late, but ultimately it didn't really affect the outcome. Closing out both of these games at home is great, and it puts the Avs right back in the mix. Still four points behind Vegas, but they have a head-to-head -head game left, and the Avs have a game in hand. So, Certainly still chasing down that first place spot. The Avs also managed to hit three posts in this game, two of them on the same shot. So, yeah, up to 59 posts now. Considering they're able to do this even when they lose both Ryan Graves and Sam Gerrard, times are good. I don't know how else to put it. As a bonus, Alex Newhook called up to the taxi squad. Don't know if he'll get in a game, but... He's a lot closer than he was a week ago. That is the end of this game video review. Thank you for watching. Head on over to thednvr.com for more coverage of the Avs. I am Rudo, and I'm not hungover. You're hungover.